Every class goes through a good amount of changes when we get to an expansion, but few so much as the Hunter. With a complete resource overhaul, new playstyles, more utility, and even pet changes, there's going to be a bunch to know about the Hunter in Cataclysm. Though, as much as it is different, it's also quite familiar to how it's played throughout Wrath. Both new races in Worgen and Goblin have access to the Hunter class, as do Human and Undead, so plenty of choice in your preferred pick here. But we've got a bunch to get through, so let's get stuck in and take a look at Hunter changes in Cataclysm Classic. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is a platform dedicated to teaching back-end web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. It keeps things interesting and fresh by treating this a learning experience like an RPG where you're in charge of the pace that the action happens. It has achievements, a leaderboards, daily goals, and much more. And above all, Boot.dev wants you to get hands-on writing and understanding your own code as it's just such an effective way to learn the content. Of course, taking on all this new information and understanding principles can be daunting at first, but Boot has an AI tool to help you understand what you're learning rather than just handing you the answers if you are stuck, as well as a Discord community to share issues and progress. Boot.dev believes that getting a solid understanding of the fundamentals and taking your time is key in this field of work, and if it proves to be something for you, it's well paid with experience and often has remarkable working opportunities too, so why not give them a go? You can click the link in the description box and use my code Will E to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% your first month or your first year, depending on the subscription that you choose. Many thanks to boot.dev for the sponsor today, let's get back to WoW. First up, what is new baseline to the class? Well, say goodbye to your mana bar first of all. Similar to what your pet has been using for the past few years, the hunter will now also have focus as their primary resource. Focus works very much like an energy bar, where it will restore over time, is increased by haste effects, and can also be gained through talents as well as procs. The difference is hunters have a much more active role in maintaining their focus through steady or cobra shot. This does also change hunters from just pressing an ability when it comes off of cooldown to now making sure that you have enough focus for the appropriate ability, be it on single target or on AoE. You know, in pre-release vanilla, Blizzard nearly gave hunters focus from day one, but it would have only regenerated when you were standing still, so I think this version is a bit better than that. Either way, mana has had its time, but especially playing survival in Wrath of the Lich King, honestly, most of the time you didn't really notice it was there anyway. Another change is that hunters will no longer use ammo either, so plus one bag space for the hunters. Pet happiness is also gone from the game, so your pet is always going to be doing the same damage. All effects that used to modify pet happiness will now just restore health. Something new which you'll be happy to hear about is that auto shots will now fire off whilst moving, so you don't have to do that thing where you pause for a moment anymore. I bet it's going to take Hunter mains a little while to adjust to this one. In fact, Hunter as a whole is going to be an incredibly mobile DPS this expansion, which is another way of saying you get to deal with lots of ranged mechanics, so do be aware of that too. Not everything has gone though. Minimum attack range for ranged weapons is still in the game, and melee players will be delighted to know that Hunters will still want to roll on melee weapons as stat sticks. Both of these things ended up changing a miss of Pandara, but we're not quite there yet. Hunter pets get more options too. The aggressive stance is gone and has been replaced by assist, which just makes your pet hit what you are hitting. Also, the stay command is gone and has been replaced by move too, so you can pre-position your pet if needs be. You also get a bunch of new pets in Cataclysm, from foxes, beetles, monkeys, mastiffs, to exotic pets such as the Shale Spider. And these pets have so many new abilities too. Most of them are just focus dumps which fit thematically with their pet type, but hunters are also like a toolbox of different raid-wide buffs or debuffs. Chances are, if your raid is missing something, there is a hunter pet that will be able to do it. Your pet talent trees are still in the game too, and are relatively unchanged from Wrath, but I'll talk more about that when we get onto talents. Over in the Beast Mastery tree, Kill Command has been reworked. Now it's kind of similar to how it was in TBC again, where it's an instant attack with a short cooldown. 
and it's going to be the most important focus dump for BM hunters nowadays. Call stabled pets has been changed up too. Now you can call a variety of five different pets instead of having to wait five minutes between each time you wanted to swap a pet out. This is kind of a big deal in PvP. Mend Pet now restores 25% of your pet's max health instead of a flat amount, and Feed Pet restores 50% health and is only usable out of combat. A new ability in the BM tree, which I kind of completely forgot about until doing the video, is called Widow Venom, which is just a 25% healing debuff, or in other words, your standard mortal strike affecting Cataclysm. Guessing this is more of a PvP thing since Aim Shot no longer has a mortal strike effect. You also get Aspect of the Fox. This is the thing that makes Hunter super mobile. Your stead, your Cobra shots can now be used whilst moving, and you also gain focus when hit by melee attacks. In the marksmanship tree, volley is gone, and multi-shot has been changed to be your big filler AoE ability. Multi-shot itself now has a focus cost, no cooldown, and is no longer target capped. Steady Shot generates some focus in addition to dealing damage now, and Flare will reveal both hidden and invisible enemies. Arcane Shot is based off of weapon damage, so it actually does some damage, which is nice. And usually I wouldn't specifically mention glyphs here, but there's a glyph for kill shot, for if it doesn't kill its target, its cooldown is instantly reset and you can use it again. So when you're in execute phase, you more or less always have two kill shots, which is just a lot of fun. In the survival tree, we have quite a few changes. Scatter Shot is now a baseline ability for hunters and does not need to be talented. Deterrence in addition to deflecting attacks will now also reduce all damage taken by 30% for its duration. New things in the survival tree include Trap Launcher. Activate to fire your next trap from range. You can use it on any trap, but it does cost a bit of focus to use. Cobra Shot is an ability I've mentioned once or twice now, and it's an alternative to Steady Shot which deals nature damage and extends the duration of Serpent Sting. This is your go-to filler spell as Beast Mastery or Survival. Camouflage is a new and rather strange ability. One minute cooldown lasts one minute to activate to become untargetable by ranged attacks and also be stealthed when stationary. You can also drop traps during camo, but damage will remove the effect. Next up, we're going to check out some of the new talents and builds related to PvE. Here, I'll be going over Beast Mastery and Survival, and we'll get on to Marksmanship a little bit later. When you choose the BM tree, you get Intimidation, which works the same way that it basically always has. Your pet gets a stun and generates some threat. You'll also get Animal Handler for 30% bonus attack power, and your mastery increases the damage done by your pets. The talent tree for BM has been given a pretty severe shakeup in terms of which talents are where and what they do, and for good reason, because BM in Wrath of the Lich King was at best really just a leveling spell. Back. New is Focus Fire. This consumes up to 5 stacks of your pet frenzy for 3% haste per stack. So you're capping out at 15% haste, and you should be able to maintain this all the time. Cobra Strikes has been changed to a flat 15% proc chance when you use Arcane Shot, and will make your pet's next two special attacks crit. Fervor is a new instant cooldown which restores a bunch of focus. And Killing Streak makes it so when Kilkoan crits twice in a row, the next one does more damage and costs less focus. Bestial Wrath has been toned down. It used to deal 50% bonus damage, but now it's 20% in Kata. Then again, we do have a pet mastery now to offset this big nerf. The Beast Within also reduces the focus cost of abilities by 50% whilst Bestial Wrath is active, making it into a much better cooldown. BM also, of course, course brings that 3% damage buff to your raid from Ferocious Inspiration, which otherwise still only Rhett or Arcane can do, so this can be pretty nice to have. Invigoration gets a big buff. When your pet crits, you instantly get 6 focus. And finally, Beast Mastery allows you to tame certain exotic pets with unique abilities and increases the number of pet talent points you have by 4. Your choice of pet in Kata comes down to what the raid needs in terms of buffs or debuffs that may be missing. If nothing's missing, then more or less any pets with the Ferocity talent tree will do just fine. So expect to see 
a bit more variety in pets used during kata. Also exotic pets have two unique abilities instead of the one that other pets will do. For example, Chimera have a Frost Breath attack as a ranged focus spender, as well as Frost Storm Breath, which is an AoE channeled attack. In terms of your ferocity pet talents, it's pretty similar to Wrath. What we're looking at picking up here is Culling the Herd, so you and your pet have a 3% damage buff, Rabbit as a self buff for your pet, and of course Call of the Wild. This is a 10% attack power buff that should be macroed together with other big cooldowns. Wild Hunt has also been reworked from bonus stats to your pet now spends more focus on attacks but they do way more damage. However, realistically only BM will be able to get this due to their extra talent points. BM uses glyphs such as Arcane Shot, Kill Command and Kill Shot. But the vast majority of the time it won't be BM that you are seeing in PvE. It's gonna be survival. It's kind of looking like a run back from Wrath of the Lich King here, where the go-to spec of the expansion was survival from day one right to the very end. Either way, in the last few patches of Kata, survival got a few very good buffs in a row, leaving it in a very strong place. When you pick the survival talent tree, you gain the iconic explosive shot. Still works the way it always has, but it now costs 50 focus. Bit of a side note, spell ranks are gone in Kata, by the way, so you won't be doing any 4, 3, 4 macroing anymore if you did that in Wrath. And we'll have to properly space out your explosive shot casts when lock and load is active. You gain 10% bonus agility to a survival, and your mastery increases all magical damage you deal. In your talent tree, a very important pickup is improved Serpent Sting. This is going to make Serpent Sting start to deal some real good damage. Lock and Load and TNT now provide different ways to proc two free casts of Explosive Shot. The former from Frost Traps, the latter from Fire Damage or Black Arrow. Toxicology is new and increases the periodic crit damage of Serpent Sting and Black Arrow by 100%, and Noxious Stings increases damage against targets with Serpent Sting active by 10%. Hunting Party has changed to be an aura-wide attack power buff if your raid doesn't already have that. Towards the bottom of the tree is Serpent Spread. Targets hit by multi-shot are now afflicted by 6 seconds of Serpent Sting. This scales super well with the instant damage from improved Serpent Sting, and along with Explosive Trap, keeps Hunter doing some great AoE damage. And finally is Black Arrow, which is simply a damage over time effect. And you're probably wondering this as well if you've played Hunter in Wrath, and yes, you will be casting Black Arrow on single target. Glyph of Explosive Trap is gone too, as all periodic effects can crit by default in Kata. And they buff to Black Arrow to deal way more damage and tick more often as well in later patches of the expansion. So it should be your go-to single target ability instead of having to worry about finding angles to launch Explosive Trap. Survival uses glyphs such as Explosive Shot, Kill Shot, and Arcane Shot or Serpent Sting depending on the tier. So how are we expecting the Hunter to perform overall in PvE then? Well, you might have noticed I just straight up didn't cover marksmanship in the PvE section, and unfortunately that has happened for a reason. If you go and look back at Firelands Rag 25 Heroic World first, Paragon were playing marksmanship back then during this fight, so there must have been a time when it was the go-to Hunter spec for the expansion, but everything I can find these days points to marksmanship being sent into the Shadow Realm in terms of PvE viability. It's a spec that doesn't bring much in the way of buffs or debuffs that another class or hunter spec can't, and most of all, it just doesn't put up enough damage. This may very well be a repeat of the Wrath of the Lich King Marksman Hunter, but we don't have the light at the end of the tunnel that maybe it would have scaled with Armor Pen, and even then in Wrath, Marksman got destroyed by survival when more than one target existed. But marksmanship is not looking as though it's going to be a viable pick for PvE in Cataclysm at this point in time. It's expected that BM will be playable to a certain degree and can provide good single target damage as well as buff coverage, but it's otherwise very lacking on the AoE side of things. The fact that BM has the 3% damage buff though and can bring nearly any raid wide buff are really the reasons to play it. But if everything is covered, you're gonna be playing survival. So survival itself has top tier single target damage, 
and the best AoE of any Hunter spec by a very, very long way. It even specs into making its utility traps better by default, and its playstyle is also pretty similar to Wrath to be honest. Apply your dots, keep explosive shot on cooldown, and just blast on DPS. Of course, Hunters also bring Misdirection, which is an amazing cooldown to get mobs to tanks, and they're just far more mobile in Kata thanks to Aspect of the Fox. Survival is expected to be a top tier pick at the start of the expansion, but should be outscaled as we progress by other classes, particularly those who get access to a legendary, so casters with the two-handed staff or rogues with daggers. Either way, if you liked Survival in Wrath, you're gonna like it in Kata, and it remains something that's always wanted in a raid. Next we have PvP, and in this bit I want to focus on Marksman. So when you pick the Marksmanship tree, you get Aim Shot. Aim Shot is now once again a casted ability that deals high single target damage. You also get bonuses to your auto shot damage and your mastery gives ranged attacks a chance to instantly fire an additional shot. Improved steady shot is a core ability which gives you 15% ranged attack speed for 8 seconds after using two steady shots in a row. Careful aim gives 60% bonus crit chance to a few shots on targets above 90% health. This is a huge talent for target swapping or opening on somebody coming out of CC. Silencing Shot is of course still in the game and has been moved a bit further up the Marksman tree. Concussive Barrage now guarantees a day's effect when Chimera or Multi-Shot lands, and True Shot Aura has had a mini rework. Now it increases the melee attack power of allies by 20% and ranged attack power by 10%. This buff is also brought by a number of other classes though. Termination gives Steady Shot more focus generation when used on low health targets, and Master Marksman has also been re worked. When using Steady Shot you have a 60% chance to gain a stack of Master Marksman and at 5 stacks your next aim shot is free and instant cast. Marked for Death makes certain Hunter abilities passively apply a version of Hunter's Mark. Post Haste reduces the cooldown on Rapid Fire and gives 30% movement speed after using Disengage for a short period. Finally we have Chimera Shot which now in Kata refreshes Serpent Sting and gives you a minor heal. Marksman will use glyphs such as Arcane Shot, Steady Shot and Rapid Fire. In PvP you will also be using a different pet, and most of the time you're gonna be seeing the Monkey. It's a cunning pet and in the talent tree the big selling points are Bullheaded, which is a PvP trinket for your pet, Roar of Recovery to regenerate some of the Hunter's focus, and Roar of Sacrifice, which makes the target immune to crits on a 1 minute cooldown, but transfers 20% of damage taken to the Hunter's pet. The reason you take Monkey often is for bad mana, which is their unique ability. This is essentially blind, but it lasts 4 seconds on a 1 minute cooldown. This is very good for setting up CC chains. I'm pretty sure there was a bug where you could chain call stabled pets with 5 monkeys and use bad mana 5 times in a row, which had no diminishing returns for a 20 second CC. I'm guessing this got changed at some point, but anyway, monkeys are going to be great for PvP. Next up we have our tier set, starting with tier 11 from Bastion of Twilight Throne of the Four Winds and Blackwing Descent. This set has always kind of looked like a weird murloc to me. I think it's the helm that does it. Maybe that's what Blizzard were going for though. Either way, the two set increases crit chance of Serpent Sting by 5%, which survival definitely benefits the most from, and the four set reduces the cast time of Steady or Cobra Shot by 0.2 seconds. Overall, just a bunch more focus generation and damage from this tier. Not the most exciting bonuses, but very functional. Tier 12 is the Flame Walkers battle gear from the Firelands. I like what they did with this tier set, it's very fitting for the raid, and the hell makes you look like one of the bosses, Shadox, who is found in the Firelands. The two set makes it so Steady or Cobra Shot have a 10% chance to trigger a flaming arrow for 80% weapon damage as fire. Again, sounds great for survival because they do bonus magic damage. And the Forcer gives your auto shots a 10% chance to make your next shot or kill command free. Pretty huge Forcer bonus here. This will be saving you a ton of focus over the course of a fight, particularly when you have cooldowns running. Finally, from Dragon Soul is tier 13, the Worm Stalker's Battle Gear. The set bonuses are kind of insane though, which is very typical for Dragon Soul tier. The two sets straight up doubles the focus gain from Steady or Cobra Shot, and the four set gives Arcane Shot a chance to grab. 30% bonus haste for 15 seconds. That is another heroism effect on your tier, which is pretty amazing. For what it's worth, all Hunter specs do use 
Ranger Arcane shot as a focus stump, but it might be kind of annoying to get this to proc when you want it to. However, I checked it out and Wowhead says it has a 105 second internal cooldown and a 40% proc chance. So this will just be one to track with weak horrors and making sure when it's off of cooldown, you have some arcane shots to fire off. And that is your Hunter class in Cataclysm. Though it is set to get some pretty big changes, I do think the way it plays remains quite familiar. And if you've liked playing your Hunter in Wrath, you're probably gonna like it in Kata as well. It remains a very strong pick in PvP, having a number of comps which can very much push rating, and in PvE, survival is looking as though it will be a mainstay pick which will be highly valued throughout the entire expansion. What are your thoughts on Hunter and Kata though? How well do you think they will hold up? Will marksmanship surprise us and turn out to be good in PvE? Perhaps BM is being slept on? Let me know below. And finally, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.